The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission has arrested former Governor of Anambra State, Willie Obiano, hours after the inauguration of his successor. And in preparation for the 2023 elections, Northeast Business Forum buys PDP presidential candidate a form, um, and that's uh, former Vice President Atiku Abubakar. Well, this is Plus Politics, and I am Mary Anakom. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, has arrested the immediate past governor of Anambra State, Willie Obiano, at the Maritala Mohammed International Airport in Lagos. Obiano had reportedly been on the watch list of the EFCC following the commission's letter to the Controller General of the Nigeria Immigration Service on November 15, 2021 requesting immigration to place Obiano on a watch list and inform it at any time if he's traveling out of the country from any of the international airports and other points of entry and exit. It was learned that Obiano was arrested for allegedly mismanaging over 17 billion Naira Pari Club refund and security votes. Well, joining us to discuss this is Obin Nachiku and Elvis Asia. They are both legal practitioners. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me on the program. Elvis, I was very tempted to call your surname Asia, but uh, <laughs> I tried not to. Well, I'm going to start with you, Barista Chiku. Um, for uh, Governor Obiano, who has been a very low-key governor, hardly on TV, never really um, was on the media. He had many, very many spokesperson, uh, was hardly in the news per se. Um, one would not necessarily think have thought that he would be on the watch list of the EFCC. I mean, again, he just handed over to his predecessor and many people are asking questions as to where he was going. But when you heard the story or the news that, uh, the breaking news that he was being arrested by the EFCC, what were your thoughts? Okay. Um, first, uh, thank you for having me once more. I am um, somehow, some of us we are startled when we had that breaking news that the immediate past uh, governor of Anambra State was arrested by the EFCC. But again, to me, it has always been the same thing. It's the same story. I can tell you, after the night from 1999 to 2003, immediately after uh, that regime passed, EFCC also swooped in and arrested quite a number of them. But to me, the question or the, the aspect that I would like to look at is that how many of them has, uh, how many of them have ESTC been able to uh, uh, secure conviction? I am not really happy or enthused or enthusiastic or or uh, I don't know how to describe it, that uh, he was arrested, given the fact that it has always been the same thing. And I think you cannot, uh, there is this uh, saying that uh, you can't do something and expect different results. So that didn't really, it didn't jump out for me, but just that I, I, one can conclude that uh, it was expected because that has been the, the modus operandi of uh, EFCC. Hmm. Interesting. Elvis, um, a lot of people are saying that this is a, that usual witch hunt uh, of those who are not in the ruling party. Some are making cases that if he were to be in the ruling party, uh, this would have not necessarily been the case. And people made jokes, even on social media, saying if he had known, uh, immediately after handing over, he would have declared for the ruling party and maybe all would have been well. But um, looking at it, this is the only time that this man has been stripped of his immunity. And what better time to swoop in if there be any um, credence to the charges that have been brought or the allegations by the EFCC? What are your thoughts? What I think is that um, uh, first, uh, it's important for us to know that uh, now that uh, he has been stripped of his immunity as granted by the Constitution, 
the EFCC has the right, uh, other security agencies has the powers to arrest him and uh, prosecute him if they find uh, him wanting with respect to any particular crime that was committed uh, during the course of uh, his uh, tenure. Um, yes, it is true that in Nigeria, once you are in the ruling party, uh, your sins are likely to be forgiven, but that doesn't um, that doesn't give other people, uh, you know, immunity, <laughs> so to say, uh, from uh, being uh, arrested and prosecuted in accordance with the law. I think what is important is whether or not there is uh, something the EFCC has evidence, the EFCC has garnered sufficient evidence against him, whether they have what it takes uh, to really uh, succeed in an action uh, in the criminal charge against him. I think that's what is really important. At the end of the day, uh, we all will have some sentimental reasons why we, we want somebody to go scot free. Um, you know, uh, I mean, let us start from somewhere. Um, we all know that, we know in this country that. Uh, the governors um, had under the uh, canopy of immunity uh, to do all, commit all sorts of evil, particularly financial misappropriation. I'm not saying that uh, Obiano is guilty, but I'm saying that the EFCC has uh, the rights and, and the powers to go after him. Uh, in fact, I'm even surprised. What is surprising for me, actually, is the fact that we wait till um, the tenure is over uh, to do a proper investigation. The law in this country, since 2002, uh, as interpreted by the, by the Supreme Court, is that a governor or even a president can be investigated. Uh, so one would have expected that, as of now, the EFCC will have sufficient uh, evidence. They have all the, because I, I've dealt with them with respect to, uh, you know, clients, and they have what it takes to get information on financial uh, uh, misappropriation by governors and political office holders whilst they're in office. So, so one would have expected that by now they have already done sufficient uh, work uh, because what you know, the last I heard is that oh, they're not going to disclose what is being arrested for uh, because they're still investigating. That's that's a very bad signal. Uh, it just you know shows that perhaps they haven't really done their work. Uh, they had eight years to investigate this man. Uh, they had eight years to investigate any other uh, governor, president, or their deputies or vice president of the country. So by now, I would have thought that you know they already have information. Before you arrest somebody, you should have something. You're arresting somebody for somebody for, for a crime. You need to say exactly the reason why you're arresting somebody. If you are saying after to, uh, almost 24 hours that you cannot disclose the reason why the person, somebody's been arrested, that sends really rather so that sends a, a, a bad signal out there, and you know it might confirm what some people are saying that perhaps it's because uh, it's not in the opposition uh, in the ruling party that he's been uh, arrested uh, the way he has been arrested. Hmm. What, what uh, Barista Chiku said earlier on, uh, that he's not necessarily surprised at this because this seems to be the modus operandi of the EFCC and sometimes even the DSS. Um, we hear about these um, arrests. We hear, you know, it's spread across the, the front pages of our newspapers, but then he's talking about the follow through here. So I'm gonna po pose that question to you. Why is there a difficulty in the follow through? I know you've talked about the fact that um, these investigations needed to have started earlier on, but here we are. Uh, things are not done the way you expect it to be done. But why do you think that the EFCC finds it very difficult to follow through with these cases and half the time we never see the end of it? Well, the, the reason, in my view, is obvious. Um, you know, a lot of these things are politically mot uh, motivated. Yes, there's, there's genuine reason for going after. Uh, you know, political office holders, uh, uh, those who uh, enjoy immunity wise in the office. But in most cases, uh, these investigations are politically motivated and the proper things are not done. Uh, the investigation is not sh shortly done. And when, uh, you know, uh, charges are filed, you see that the courts will throw most of these charges out, which is why in, in, for so many years, a lot of governors uh, have been arrested and not much has been done in terms of conviction. Um, you know, because at the end of the day, uh, we, political uh, motivation is actually the reason behind some of this uh, investigation. And secondly, the EFCC, um, you know, I mean, I made the point earlier that you are arresting somebody uh, who, who has been in office for eight years. And you are arresting him. You arrested him yesterday, and today you are still saying that oh, you cannot disclose the reason why he has been arrested. That clearly shows that you don't you have nothing. That clearly shows that you haven't done your homework. The EFCC and other security agencies must, you know, learn to do their homework uh, properly uh, before people are arrested. Otherwise, you are going to have continue to have, uh, you know, the same issue of um, 
uh, people being uh, 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 let go by the court uh, because of you know uh, shoddy investigation uh, by the police. I think we need to uh, find a way to uh, you know you know properly train uh, you know our, our our security personnel on you know investigation. Uh, but you know uh, with respect to the ESCC, I still keep I, I tell people that perhaps it's not really because they don't have the capacity because I've dealt with them. I know that they have access to practically all your financial information. I know that they have access to everything that they want to get. So sometimes you wonder why this doesn't happen. I think it's, again, political influence and, and the fact that, you know, um, in, uh, you know, those who have governed states for years with the security rules, they have embezzled and other monies they have taken without proper accountability. They are able to, uh, you know, uh, play along with the system and, and prevent these um, prosecutions from seeing the light of the day. Let me come back to you, Barista Chiku, just to pick up from where he stopped. He's talking about the, fa the follow-through issue here. And um, he's, he's made a case, and I'm wondering, if he's saying that most half the time these things are politically motivated, um, and then one looks at the EFCC, we're always uh, clamoring for strong institutions, which we're yet to uh, even scratch the surface in this part of the world. But um, how does that affect the EFCC and, and, and you know its ability to carry out its job to the later? Again... Uh, we call we say that our security um, agencies are able to bark but they're not able to bite uh, meaning that they may may be at the whims and caprices of whoever is running the government so how can we take seriously these um allegations of money laundering or let's say um stealing from public coffers or like for example in the case of governor obi i know they've talked about um, mismanagement of funds and especially uh, the paris club fund and the uh, security votes which nobody ever knows how much it is where does that leave the efcc in all of this okay so to me i think that um, i will say that uh, efcc does not have the capacity to to deal with this type of crime because over time we have seen not one, not three, not 10, not 15. It has become like a normal thing for EFCC. Once uh, a public officer exhausts or the tenor expires, the next thing EFCC suits on, on him and is uh, possibly arrested, kept for a few days, take to court, granted bail, the politician comes back to to the society and never allows the society to rest with the enormous money that they have paid for or fleeced from, from the government treasury. To me, I will conclude that EFCC, because like I said before, you can't continue to do the same thing. You can't continue to do the same thing. You wait until when they leave office and you now invited them and you start to you start to investigate. That's not how it should be done. To me, I will think that uh, if Nigerians are serious, if the legislators, the executive and uh, the executive are serious, we should take away these powers from EFCC and send this power to try a, a political or public office holders before a special court. Call it a tribunal. But there has and to be a law enforcement, but law enforcement law. has to do the arresting. So when you say the powers be taken away from EFCC, they're not the courts, of course. You're talking about a tribunal of yes. sorts. But law enforcement yes. does I, have a I, role to play, I and that's why I'm, the EFCC was created in the first place, right? I know what I'm saying. If you take away, if you remove EFCC, like it does appear like uh, that Nigeria has uh, relegated Nigerian police to the background when it comes to uh, politically uh, motivated uh, crimes. It does appear to me that uh, the Nigerian police uh, has been relegated to the background. In the same vein, we can we can allow after all at the beginning of a tenor the politician is meant to take an oath is meant to appear before the code of conduct where he signs respective forms why can't we also make it uh, have a a law that stipulates that immediately the tenor in fact a few days to the end of the tenor the same politician goes back to 
the code of conduct and try to look at the papers and look at all that has transpired and see once there's any infraction once there's any infraction the public uh, the uh, public office order is taken to a special court then from the special court that will be like a tribunal that must not exceed 90 days or 120 days so that this issue of uh, uh, EFCC sweeping on a swooping on a on a politician, arresting, uh, uh, talking the politician or the immediate past uh, uh, public office holder, and a few months. Who's, go, who, who's, go, who's, go, who's going to who's going to chair that tribunal? State. Who's going to sit at that tribunal? Because we're complaining about the um, you know should, shortages. The should provide that How? the person that must be the judge or the chairman of that tribunal must have the same qualification with that of a, a high court of nigeria so that so that the issue of a uh, political office so that being with public funds can be done with within 90 days or 120 days if we're able to do that and the politician is convicted within 90 days or 120 days that will serve as a deterrent to others. It will make the others to sit up. People will now know that once you get into serve, that as soon as you leave office, within 90 days or 120 days, the all issues pertaining to uh, money laundering and pilfering of uh, of uh, public uh, public coffers will be will be laid to rest instead of this macabre dance that we are witnessing. Because I can tell you, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, the immediate past governor of Anambra State, give it in the next one, two months. He will be granted bail. Of course, it's a bailable offense. The next thing he will, uh, he will start to junket all over the world, enjoying whatever, and again, uh, uh, hire lawyers and ensure that the judicial process is, uh, is somehow uh, somehow delayed. Look at the governor of Abia State, the former governor of Abia State. He's still there. He's serving in the Senate, still getting more money from Nigeria. This is a man that was accused, that was alleged to have been uh, 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 from, uh, from the coffers of Abia State. Today, he's the minority leader in the Senate. And he, he continues to enjoy much more money than the ordinary Nigerian that elected him to serve, wherein okay. he did not serve. And uh, according to uh, what EFCC said, that at the end of the day, he ended up pilfering with Abia State uh, funds. Okay. The same thing, not only Abia State, the same thing is across all the states in Nigeria. Mm. You arrange them. A few months after, they are granted bail. They go back, contest elective position, get into the Senate, uh, get some somewhat covering from the Senate. And uh, from the Senate, they start to earn their pension from the state government. The, same, the pension is still running. The yeah. same governor earns pension from the state. The same governor earns money from the Senate. He has enough money to frustrate the judiciary. One of the conditions of bail is that the person granted bail must not impede the investigation. It must not interfere with trial. But with the kind of money that we are putting in their hands, why can't the person interfere with, with trial? So you're saying no that the judiciary is complicit because from, what, from what you're today. saying, you're saying that the judiciary is complicit because you're talking about financial in, inducements here, meaning that the the bench we're talking about the whole judiciary no, no, no. you're I'm not talking about, them. no i didn't say that he will use the money to induce judicial so what exactly what did I you mean by, by implication he uses the money hire 20 30 senior advocates of nigeria bring them to court bring more lawyers to court as a senior advocate is coming he comes with two more at the end of the day he has 150 lawyers that are standing, that are defending him. Once a uh, judge makes a pronouncement, they file an interlocutory application at the Court of Appeal. 
By the time that they go through that interlocutory application at the Court of Appeal, the matter is delayed for another one, two years. Mm. They come back again, assuming if the appeal rule against them, rules against them, they come back again and start with the process. Once a judge makes another another action or takes another action or the other party files or argues on a particular issue, they go back to appeal from okay. appeal court to Supreme Court. By the time they come back, okay. seven, eight, ten or more years. Okay. Um, let, me go, let me go back. Let me go back to Elvis. Because he has money. And sorry, whilst that was still going on, he continues to earn his pension from the state government. Even as Obiano is there, even if he spends six months there or one year, the pension from Anambra State, which he created for himself, will still be running. Hmm. What kind of system is that? That a okay. man that is alleged to have pifed or fleeced the money belonging to the people is giving more money by government. Okay. We'll, com we'll come back to talk about to that. Government. We'll come back to talk about that. Let's put a pin there. Let's put a pin there. Let me come to Elvis. Elvis... Um, uh, Barrister Chiku seems to be, you know, giving us very interesting points. But I want us to focus our attention on the EFCC as a body. We keep calling these bodies independent, like with even those that have appendages of independence, like the like INEC, like the ICPC. These are supposed to be bodies that are independent. But then we go back to looking at how these bodies were created, how the heads of these bodies are picked. It, it all plays into, you know, the independence or the true independence of these bodies. So how do we, because we started this conversation by talking about doing the same thing all the time and getting the same results. So how do we rewire the system of fighting uh, corruption and um, financial crimes in the country within the polity? And of course, before we go down to the common man, because the government steals doesn't mean that, you know, we should not talk about that. But how do we rewire the system, including the, the, the body that is, in, you know, um, saddled with the responsibility of making sure that these people are tried and if they are found guilty, are thrown behind bars? How do we look at rewiring that system? The biggest uh, challenge we have with, um, you know, the EFCC is the fact that, you know, yes, the law is structured in such a way as to give it some level of independence, you know, so that, so that uh, investigations uh, can be properly done without uh, the influence of the political actors in the system. But unfortunately, uh, we don't seem to have regards for building institutions in this country. Uh, we were in this country, or we were in this country when somebody was heading the EFCC for years without, uh, you know, the Senate approval, without National, Assem National Assembly approving it in line with the law. Um, actions like that have, you know, over the years destroyed uh, independ the independence of, of the EFCC and other security agencies, such that today, um, in a way, they're answerable to uh, those who appoint them. Uh, typically, uh, the law is that, you know, when the president appoints um, the head of, of the EFCC. It's supposed to be subject to ratification, uh, you know, by the National Assembly. But, uh, like I said, with respect to the, the former uh, EFCC chairman, we had a situation where the president kept him on for years uh, without, without um, uh, you know, the National Assembly's uh, approval. We need to go back to uh, building institutions. You know, uh, when this government came to power in 2015, a lot of people were saying that uh, they were going to fight corruption. I have always known. I had always known that that wasn't going to be possible, because you don't fight corruption by you know uh, you know power or by um, you know, the, the, the the strength or the the, the strength of, of of the president. You, you need to create institutions that are independent institutions that have capacity, institutions that you know uh, have men and women that were trained uh, to do this investigation without. Uh, being influenced. I've, I've dealt with EFCC on a few occasions. Um, you know, I mean, uh, you cannot, you cannot, uh, for example, uh, put the kind of lawyers, the kind of people that they have to do investigation and prosecution on the EFCC. Uh, you can't put it side by side with the lawyers that are available uh, to those who have taken so much money from the system. Just like my late friend said, that uh, those who can, um, you know, afford uh, to get as many senior advocates and, and the best lawyers in the country. 
Uh, so you need to find a way to train, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, people uh, in the FCC, not just in the FCC, but other security agencies, so that their jobs can be done. And yeah, then again, we but, but you say we, you say like like um, it's it's interesting to, that we you know these ideas are thrown out, and I'm not thinking that you're the first person that has come up with this idea. But why do you think that we our leaders have never paid attention to this, or even tried to see how independent these guys can be? Uh, what do you think I is think at the core I of think the food the, I, think the, I think the core of the problem is that, you know, it, it's become a culture in this country. Um, it's a culture of impunity. Um, you know, the next person is looking for, for an opportunity to be escapated from, uh, you know, a crime or from bad behavior uh, by influencing the system. It's become a culture. Um, so we need to find a way to address that culture because those who are uh, presidents, governors, uh, you know, the FCC chairman, other security agencies, the special, they are part of they are Nigerians. And so we have all learned this, we have all inculcated this habit of, uh, you know, allowing just one person you know, to determine uh, what happens. We, we don't have, you know, that institutional culture uh, that can engender, uh, you know, an effective response in terms of investigation and, 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 and prosecution. So mm -hmm. it, it's more like a cultural thing. I mean, somebody who's, uh, you have politicians who have stolen money, for example, when they go to their villages, they are celebrated. People lie on the street, people wait for hours to see them because they have money to throw around. Mm -hmm. it's, it, it's, it's a cultural thing. And we have to go back to that because there's no amount of law, you know, even if you are made a law today to create a special tribunal or to, you know, uh, appoint, you know, the system you know, will still be corrupted. Uh, mm. Because of you know a culture that has become uh, you know the culture of the people eventually determines how they respond to issues, how they respond to, for example, the issue of investigation. Okay. If the society is so um, you know uh, not accommodating uh, you know some of these actions by uh, political officials and other people who are, are flouting the laws across the country, then you will see that reflected in the way and manner. Uh, the investigation is done, in the way a manner of prosecution is done, okay. in the way a manner the court even handles it. So it's, it's a systemic problem, and, and we need to look at, we need to address that system, okay. uh, rather than just picking up uh, one or two issues. Uh, Unfortunately, time is not our friend, but I want to say thank you, Barrister Albinna and uh, Elvis Asia. Thank you so much for speaking with us. We appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you all for staying with us. We'll take a short break. When we come back, the Northeast Business Forum has purchased the PDP presidential form for the former vice president, Atiku Abubakar. We'll talk about this after the break.